Kia ora, kia ora, kia ora. Welcome to the NZ Ahead podcast. Everything you need to know about moving to and living in New Zealand. There's a whole world here. So nice to be with you again. We call Aotearoa around here, bro. Uh-huh. You'll be right. We are your hosts, Liz and Brian. Amazing New Zealand in the southern seas. See, that's where I belong. That's home. Hello and welcome to NZ Ahead. I'm Liz. And I'm Brian. And today we're going to be talking to you about the pros and cons of using an immigration advisor when you make that move to New Zealand. Yep, it makes all the difference. I think it does. So we've just got to disclose a few things, first of all. Um, One, we never used an immigration advisor and we're going to talk about why we didn't in just a while. And two, the immigration advisor that we um, that we trust and use, you know, to promote is NZ Shores, New Zealand Shores. And the reason we talk about them, uh, there's lots of other immigration advisors out there. You only have to Google them and you'll get loads come up. But the reason we love the guys at NZ Shores is because we've been friends with them for a year now. They're part of our private membership group, our Slack group. And the people that use them tell us what they think of them. And there's no better way of finding out if a company is nice, is good or not than, you know, hearing yeah. feedback from your that's, own community. And that's what proper feedback is, isn't yeah. it? You know, because word of mouth is, uh, it's so much more valuable, valuable, well, that's a hard yeah. word to say valuable, isn't it? Mm. Than, you know, uh, looking on the internet and trying to figure out Definitely. what's what. If someone turns around and says, hey, these guys, they're good. Yeah. And everybody who likes them loves the... Not so much laid backness, but just the friendliness yeah, of yeah. it. And that's if it, it feels like you're talking to a friend, then actually, you know, paying for someone's services yeah. and, stuff, and stuff like that, isn't it? Yeah. So, like I say, the people that we're, we're going to give you some um, feedback from our members of our community. This is such a good episode. You're going to love it. Yeah. Um, and they have mostly used NZ Shores. And like I say, that's why they've used them, because, you know, they're part of our community and all the rest of it. So... Let's jump in and, well, no, let me just tell you, actually, let's just start by telling you how this podcast idea came to be. We had a message from one of our community members called Jono, and that message said this. So the voice you're about to hear now is Jono. He's a member of our private community, and he asked this question. Hi, listen, Brian. My name is Jono. I'm from Yorkshire in the UK. And I was wondering if you guys could talk a little bit about immigration advisors. It'd be nice to hear from people like yourselves who haven't used them when you moved over and from some people who have uh, and what the pros and cons of each approach might be. Thanks a lot, guys. And we just thought, oh, this is such a good topic, basically because we didn't use one. uh, an immigration advisor. It's kind of hard when you didn't use one. You just think, well, why is somebody using an immigration officer? Yeah. But this was 13 years, well, it's probably, it was 13 years ago. Um, and things have changed yeah. so much, especially over the last three or four years with all the new immigration rules and laws. We, and we can't give you immigration advice, but we can talk about um, using immigration services yeah. and stuff yeah. like that. And we'll give you our experience of what we did as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. This isn't advice. It's just like Brian said, we're not allowed to give immigration advice. That's why we have NZ Shores on our team to do that for us. Yeah, yeah. Um, But we're just telling you our experience and the experience of our community members, how they found it. Right. But first of all, I want to tell you that when I got this message from Jono, I went straight to Fabian at NZ Shores and I said, can you give me a list of pros and cons um, as to why someone should use you? So I'm going to read you what he said to me on his email. So his first pro was personal consultant, which is pretty straightforward. It's self-explanatory, isn't it? Yes. Um, He said someone you can bounce ideas from, strategies, and get in the right approach the first time. Um, Yeah, so there's nothing worse than when you're actually thinking of planning to move to a different country. You, You know, you want to emigrate to New Zealand. And... The first thing is, is you have to head to the internet and but you've got no one to actually talk to. And that's what that is about, isn't it? You yeah. Know, it's actually being able to talk to a real person who can give you the advice you need. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, you know? it's priceless, it's priceless isn't it? It really is. And, and not as much as that, it saves you time. Mm. That's the big thing. It's like, what do you value your own time as nothing? It's free. Mm. It's like, well, no, you could be earning money for, uh, at the same time. You're you know? going to let me finish the pros yeah, now? Okay, yeah. Just let, just let me read right. through. Okay. Just put your hand, put your finger yeah. on your lips. 
There you go, look. Right, so... <laughs> <laughs> so he said... Yeah, so... There the might right, be 20 of them, that's the only thing. Shush. Okay. The right approach the first time, right? Oh, and this see, is interesting. I was right. <laughs> of course you're right. You're never wrong, Brian. <laughs> the world knows that. It could be very costly and ruin your chance of moving if you do it yourself and get it wrong. And he said, we've had people come to us... Imagine this. They've had people come to them after losing their job offer as a result of doing the whole process themselves mm. and getting it wrong and getting their visa declined. Yeah. That'd be a bummer, wouldn't it? Yeah. And the, the immigration services, well, keep, keep on with the yeah. pros and Okay, we'll so talk, the next point, that. thank you, Brian, okay. is guidance through ever-changing policies and rules. Yeah. Massive, mm-hmm. absolutely massive. Um, personal advocacy in um, the face of immigration officers that may not always be correct. Insights into difficult situations. Benefits from experience, obviously. Mm -hmm. This is my favourite one, though. Improves credibility for New Zealand employers because basically it shows commitment and firm intention to make the move. That's so true. It it is. It's all all about commitment, isn't it, at the end of the day? And also Fabian from NZ Shores said, NZ Shores can advocate on your behalf, confirm the motivation and that the person has had all their credentials validated. Yep. So that are all that they are all the pros that NZ Shaw's immigration services advisors said to us. So that's the pros. OK, now here's the massive big list of cons. You ready? Number one. Well, there's only one. Guess what it is, Brian? It's obviously you're going to have to put your hand in your pocket. Yeah. Yep. Additional costs. So and that is why, let's face it, everyone within our community, in our private group, when you, we've got our own private immigration channel and whenever they're in there, they're talking about, is it worth the money? Should we pay? And that's why we made this episode for you, Jono, because that's yep. what you asked. Can, so just as we, we talk about we hire people. So most people who are in a profession that want to move to New Zealand normally have a house to sell. The majority of people have a house to sell. Now, what do you do when you come to sell a house? Nine times out of ten, people go to the estate agents, the real estate agent, whoever it is, the realtor, relator, whatever they call them, and they're prepared to hand over, I don't know, upwards of £10,000 sometimes, Mm. or Mm. $10,000, upwards of that. And it, they don't even blink. No. It's just, that's just the norm. You take it, you, you factor yeah. it into the cost, don't so, you? So, you know, as a cost of moving to New Zealand, that goes into your costs. And the same should go for immigration whoa, advisors whoa, whoa, and things whoa, like whoa. that. Yes, but hang on but a minute. What, what I'm saying is you can just sell your house privately mm. and then put your money to that. There you go. Well, so it wouldn't cost you any money for the immigration advisor. How about that for the con? <laughs> you've just confused me now. So what you're saying, <laughs> that in order to pay for the immigration services, you've yeah. got to sell, sell your house. house privately. <laughs> sell, it, sell it on eBay or whatever it is you can sell it on. Yeah, just cut the cost down. And, and there's always ways to get money around. You know your trouble, Brian. What? You're a wheelie dealer. I, I'm just a, a yeah, skin you're, flint. You're a wheelie dealer yeah. skin flint. So yeah. listen, I want to talk now about, well, first of all, I just want to say thank you, Fabian at NZ Shores for giving me that information. Yep. And later on in the sh- in the show, I'm going to give you a special link that basically it comes straight from me and it gives you a free assessment as to whether or not you're eligible to move to New Zealand. So I'll give you the link. You, you go to the site, you take the little test. It's all free yep. and you will find out whether or not it's worth you pursuing the moving to New Zealand route. I don't know anyone else out there that's offering that 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 offer. No. But no. anyway, I'll give you that link later on. Now I want to talk to you about the skin flint decals who did not <laughs> <laughs> did not use an immigration advisor. Yeah. Right. The first thing they need to know, Bri, is mm-hmm. this was thirteen years ago yep. and things were very, very different thirteen years ago. It was very, very different, but we were very, very focused and very, very lucky not so much lucky no we we, we, you can never say we, we were we were lucky because um we worked hard to get to that point mm, you know sure. and, and and everything else and but things have changed but i'm just thinking you know i ran my own business at the time so you could afford to pull back from that business and take the time to do it most people are working flat out mm. and then they come home in the evening and that's when you make the mistakes is in the evening, isn't it? Because yeah, like, yeah. you've been working all day or you want to do it the weekend. The kids are, need to go here, there and everywhere. And it just becomes that type of thing, isn't it, Mike? You know? So 
what we did, um, and this is where you, you know, even then you had to be super careful. And I was doing it for four of us because you've got to do your kids and everything mm. else, you know, and you had to have all your certified copies. You had to go here, there and everywhere mm. to get all those things done. And not only that, then you had to put every piece of paper in order. Mm. If one of those pieces of paper was out of order, they rejected it. And you had to do it for the four of you. Each I had four separate pieces of paper, uh, piles. And mine was the biggest pile because it had all my... Um, you know, uh, education oh, your brilliantness. And, and all the brilliance. I am Brian. That you just came over as a housewife. <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. I am Brian. Yeah. Here's my stack. Here is Liz. Yes. One piece. <laughs> well, well, yeah, birth certificate. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you, had, you know, and you had to do all your medical certificates, and you know, you still got to go and get those things and pass them on. But then the pressure is off you mm. that you're not going to get it wrong. So that's what we did. And but it, can I just say yeah. before you carry on, Brian? Yes. Can I just say? that i mean now we run that community and we see what these guys are going through yeah, it's so different it's so different yeah. and can i just say that back then there was it was like you got a job offer there was none of this oh the company's got to be accredited and they've got to there was none of that no. it was like if you were on the shortlist which a plumber was i think did you come over as a plumber or electrician no i took, I, 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 want, I I could have come over as an electrician okay. but i had stronger qualifications on plumbing right so i came over ha- as uh a plumber which was on the long-term skill shortage yeah, list yeah yeah you had the other one which was the immediate skill shortage list which was like a gas fitter but you couldn't get residency on those things right so you could only get it on the long-term skill shortage so but we don't want to confuse no, you by i'm not going to confuse about you about all these things because it's, it's changed so yeah, much but what time. i just wanted to say bry is it was i don't want to bit like put you down and be like oh yeah you didn't do anything because i know you did a lot of work but you got a job offer and it was just like, yeah, you can come start in August, apply for your visa. There was only one visa that we applied for, wasn't it? It wasn't yes. a massive visa. No, that yeah, we, had we didn't a choice have to of. do all these critical no. care, work, care no. workers and critical worker visas and all those sort no, of things. No, it was it's very, just... very straightforward. Yeah. It was as it was very black and white. And yes, I know that you did all that yeah, stuff. I, I remember you sitting we, up we, at night and it, doing it. It just went. It was like it was meant to be, it, but. I did. We did spend a lot of time getting things and putting everything yeah. right. And, and it's it's what do you value your time at? You know, at the time I was earning what thirty five, forty pounds an hour. Mm. So if it took me a week to do it, it's a lot of money. And then it, it wouldn't have been a week. It would have been longer than that, waiting for everything to come back and then putting it all together. And, and just the stress of putting it all together. Mm. I think that's with the stress of trying to sell the house, with the you know trying to get movers and packers, and mm. it, there was so much going on. It would have been so much nicer. And and plus, well, there's no go between. So when the immigration, you talk to the immigration um, uh, officer, and he, they, they, but they were based in London where I was. So you had someone who was local. You've only got to say one thing wrong. Whereas if you if your immigration advisor is advising, they just oh, I'll need to get back to mm. the, my customer and come back to you on that. Yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? It's yeah. that type of thing. Like, you know? You've got that in-between person. Yeah, yeah. And that, so there's a bit of a buffer all yeah. the time. And that's like, like Fabian says, if you get it just one thing wrong, you boom, it yeah. can be rejected. And that stuff your job offer up unless they're prepared to hold the job up yeah. or open for you. I don't know. It just seemed, well, it didn't seem, it was so different 13 years ago yeah coming to new zealand yeah but you've it got, really yeah. was yeah i just remember trying to get all my nquas i think it was called it was new new zealand qualification assessment scheme and you had to work out for your city and girls and you had to work out for this and oh so yeah just yeah. having all that and someone advising you on that would be so much better than spending hours the internet wasn't as good as what it was now so in answer to your question, Jono, no, we didn't use an immigration advisor. We've made that yeah. clear right from the start. But that's basically why we didn't. Because yeah. it just felt like, oh, well, we can do it. It's not that hard, you know. Yeah. One visa, we've got a job already. We've just got to... And you were always on the phone to the guy in New Plymouth about your job. So it was almost yes. like we had that person yeah. in New Zealand to say, I don't know, I don't know, mm-hmm. it just felt easy. But the other thing is, Liz, is if it, if it had fallen through, we weren't on a time scale back then but a lot of people now if they get a job offer they've got to mm. it's that time scale. we were we were we were open we could, it would have taken us a year it wouldn't have mm. mattered we would have just worked with that and not only that we could have come over as at the time we could have come over and bought a new zealand business and employed some new zealand people and that's mm. where it's all changed it, it's not quite the same as that anymore right like, you know? I'm glad we didn't do that, though, Brian. No, we were looking at buying a cafe or something, I know, weren't imagine we? imagine that. If the plumbing side of it had fallen through, you know, because I had to get 
licenses and mm. stuff like that. And I had to do all that on my own. Our life would have been completely different because I wouldn't have been able to homeschool mm-hmm. and we wouldn't have lived in New Plymouth because we were looking down Coromandel Way, weren't we? Yeah, we anyway, were. Anyway, we're, yeah, we're but that's what I'm saying. That's why, you know, we didn't do, we didn't use an immigration right because we had another backup plan. Yeah. You know, not yeah. many people have got that option nowadays. Mm. So going back to our private community, by the way, if, you, if you're new to this channel and you've just arrived and you're thinking, what, what's she talking about, this private community? We have got um, a private community, actually. Yes, that's what it means, a <laughs> yes. private community. It's a paid for private it's community. It's a paid for yeah. private membership community made up of the most wonderful, gorgeous family members of ours there's over yeah. 100 people in Are fact you? there's over 150 yeah. with their spouses i think isn't well, there, there? there is yeah yeah and it's growing all the time it isn't is there, like, you know and it's um, dedicated just to moving to new zealand and as i said earlier we've got all these different channels you know me and brian facilitate it there we're there on the chat if you want to chat to us we've got fabian from nz shores there as part of the immigration team it's just wonderful and is. plus you get hours and hours of videos about moving to and living in New Zealand. So if you haven't become a member of that, no, sorry, if you haven't, if you want more details, that's what I mean to say. If you want more details about how to sign up for that membership, you need to go and take our free, absolutely free five day video guide about moving to and living in New Zealand. And on day five, when you get to day five, you'll be given the opportunity to take it forward and um and become a member Mm -hmm. so to get that free guide you go to www.nzahead slash free thank you brian slash is it dot com slash free nzahead.com slash slash free free. yeah (laughs) f-r-e-e yeah Yeah, so go and get that sign up for that it's absolutely free and on the fifth day like i say you'll be you too will be Given the chance to become a member and be showcased on our podcast, like yeah, Jono there you is, go. yeah, mm-hmm. Jono, yeah, Jono, Jono from I think he lives in in Yorkshire, Yorkshire yeah, Yorkshire he's a Yorkshire, Dales, Yorkshire guy, yeah, 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 yeah. Right, hey, so up. now we want, hey, up, Jono. Now we want to talk. <laughs> <laughs> now we want to talk about the experiences that we've our members have had, um, yes. our members who have who are part of our group, and they have talked about whether or not they used immigration advisors and you know whether it was worth it and whether it wasn't so what I've done is I've just unfortunately I can't have them all here with me in the room as much as I would have loved to I've just copied what they've said and I'm going to just read it out to you and just and just talk about it so first of all we've got Randy and you'll know Randy because we did a fantastic podcast with him and his wife Suzanne about moving from Canada to New Zealand he jumped in when Jono asked is it, you know, should you use an immigration yes. advisor? He jumped in and said, we didn't, but the big it's but. It's a big but, isn't it? Yeah. His wife is Kiwi. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah. So she's in any way because she can always come home. But it would have been so much easier because he's been married to her for, yeah. uh, was it 25 years or something yeah. like that? Yeah. yeah. He's been married a long time. Yeah. And you're going to be coming to New Zealand soon, Randy. And we're yeah, really excited to see you. Isn't it July? <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's probably counting the hours. He's yeah. actually finished work now, hasn't he? Yeah. yeah. He's actually legally retired, I think it is. He would yeah. have done. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So he said he didn't. Okay. And then we've got Adam. Adam is also part of our membership group and he is using NZ Shores. And he said... Um, Because so basically, Jono said, well, do they help you find a job? You know, because I suppose that's what you'd think, isn't it? Okay, well, I'm paying all this money. Do you get me a job? And Adam said, no, they don't help you find a job, but um, they help you format your CV and your cover letter into a New Zealand style and they can answer any questions that they have. And he also said they will work with your employer. This is really important to help explain the migration process and help to resolve any potential problems. Thank you for that, Adam. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a massive one, isn't it? Because and it is. It's it's you just need it's someone huge. to yeah. phone up your job offer and go. Yeah. No, you know and, this guy. And, is... th- and you can't speak to him till three o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah. And it's just like, what's that? Two o'clock in the morning or four o'clock in the morning, wherever you are in in Europe or or wherever. You know. Adam also says that mainly um, the advisor. These are his words. Mainly the the advisor has been able to help us organise the hundred plus pages of documents to make sure they have everything they need that will help make their application be successful. And he's just said, plus there's the added benefit of being able to go to someone with intricate questions um, because migrating to a new country is such a huge, stressful project. Um, it's been great to be able to take one extra thing off our plate. Exactly. Do you know what I was just thinking, Brian, what you said earlier? What? 
um, and I did say this on the chat as well when in this thread I mentioned it um, w- w- when you move house w- we paid for this is also another big topic on the of conversation on the group as well under the shipping, shipping, and, and, <laughs> shipping and packing, and packing. <laughs> it's probably one of the longest ones isn't <laughs> it because it's like you've got to get it right how much should we bring do we bring it all yeah. or don't we bring anything it's a yeah. massive topic and they're always talking about it on the group but basically we paid an extra I think it was an extra two and a half three thousand pound for the um, shippers to come to our house, yeah. literally clear around us it as we were sitting br- having our brilliant. dinner. Because yeah. <laughs> they just come and take in, the pictures off the yeah, wall, take the pictures off, wrap them up, write down what it was and then what box it goes yeah. into, and come into your wardrobe, just unpick all the like 10 at a time with coat all hangers, the laid into a, 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 a no, put into a hanging box wardrobe. Yeah. It was brilliant, it wasn't was. it? And taking all your kitchen drawers out and everything and just yeah. emptying and put them into boxes yeah. and it was yeah it was great and the stress i remember my mum was saying to me listen you're moving in three weeks time and you yeah. haven't even started packing i said mum i don't need to, to. Yeah. they're going to come and do it all well, as we did they packed everything and they did you know the only things that we had to clean and stuff was all like the, the garden furniture yeah. and stuff like that but you know it, it, they, they just packed it all out wrapped it all up and then you see it in in, in in new zealand when it arrives and and they write it they they itemize everything yeah. so and they know exactly what box number it is in. And so if um, NZ um, Customs and MAF want to look for something, they go, all right, we, we're going to check that box out. Yeah. You know, and that's that. So they do it all for you. So I'm using that as an example because basically we could have done all that ourselves. We could have saved ourselves 3000 I don't know how much it was. It was about 3000 pounds, wasn't it? I think it, it was an extra, an extra 1500 Was it? An extra 1500 like pounds? Yeah, yeah. No, I think it's more than that, Brian. Oh, I don't think it was. It was because I remember thinking, oh, God, it really? It took them two days, though, didn't it? Yeah. And there was about a team of about six guys. But there's an example. We could have done that ourselves. Yeah. But how stressful would that have been? So going back to the, you know, the paying for someone to do all your paperwork and stuff, yeah. it's like, I don't know. It's just where your priorities lie. If you want to do it yourself, then yeah, go ahead. But it's like, it just becomes really? <laughs> part of the cost. You yeah. know, if the cost, it's like when you're building a house, isn't it? You know, it's 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 so big sometimes the cost of moving, mm. you know, and, and this thing, it's just an extra so many thousand dollars. You know, if, if it costs you, say, by the time you sold your house and all these things, I don't know what the sum would be if it was $50,000 or whatever it was. And if it was $60,000 or whatever, you wouldn't. It would just be a cost, mm. and you just think, "Well, that's what it is." Do you know what I regret, Bry? What? Well, when we had out, we built our own house. Um, you can go and listen to a podcast about that, about building your own house in New Zealand. We built our own house, and um, you know, it, all the costs just start adding up, adding up, don't they? Yeah, they oh, do. you want this extra shelf? Oh, you want these windows? Oh, you want the sliding ranch door there? And at the end of it, we said they were like, "Okay, what what color do you want us to paint it?" And we said, "Well, how how much is it going to cost you for you to paint it?" Wasn't it? And they were, yeah. "Well, fifteen thousand dollars." I want fifteen thousand dollars. This is just the outside. Yeah, you're just talking about fifteen thousand dollars to paint the outside, outside of the, a new we'll, house. Yeah, and we're like fifteen. No way, yeah. no way. We'll do that ourselves because yeah. we're skinflints. Oh my god! It. How long did it take us? Eighteen months. Yeah, every single weekend. Yeah, in for the wind and the months, rain. Yeah, painting that bloody house yeah. for fifteen grand. I mean, yeah. it's not like you sit in there now and thinking. Oh, I'm glad I've got that 15 grand to spend. You never see that money yeah. anyway. No, it, it, ours is a weather a weatherboard house clad. It's clad in like this, almost like a cement board, but it looks like wood. Yeah. And I, I think I went through 80 tubes of filler mm. to fill all the gaps and things and where it meets in at the sides for waterproofing because it had to be filled with a special filler to comply with the building regulations. Mm. I think Nightmare. if you're going to try and save money, like say, for example, if you don't use an, an immigration services or you don't use a packers or you don't let someone paint your house when you've just had it built, <laughs> take that money that you would have spent, go and put it into an account and for God's sake, go on holiday or do something with it because otherwise you never see that no, money No, you anyway. never see it. You never do. You That's never what I say. It. it just becomes a cost. Yeah. yeah. And it's not, we're not saying, oh, it's cheap to get an immigration advisor. It, 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 nine times out of ten, it, it, it isn't unless it's just basic advice like, and i'm you know? sorry i don't know the actual cost because apparently the everything's actual, different, everything yeah, yeah it varies for each person yeah. so i can't even tell you oh it's going to cost you this much but like i say i'll give you the link at the end of the show go to well go to nz shores take the immigration the 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 test the initial free test and they'll give you a quote about how much it's going to be if they think you're eligible to to come to new zealand yeah. but anyway i just want to jump back in before we end the show and just say about 
who else used an immigration? So, you know, Miley, everyone knows and yep, loves my, Miley. Miley. <laughs> Our nurse from um, Dunedin. Yeah. Um, she's done a couple of podcasts with us now. She's a flipping valuable member of our community. We love you, Miley. Yeah. You're brilliant. And she said she didn't use an immigration advisor. So she, her words are, we came over without any help, but I spent a whole lot of time managing documents and double checking that I was doing everything correctly. We are now using NZ Shores for our resident visa for two reasons. One, I really don't want to mess up this visa and I'm burned out on applying for visas on my own. For us, it's been worth it and we've had really good experiences so far. So that's nice to hear, isn't it? Yeah, but it? that's, that's what it's all about. Yeah, it's, exactly. It's their job. That's why we push yeah. them though, Brad, because you're always yeah. hearing this. It's, you keep hearing it, don't you? Yeah. You know? um, she said, it is a bit costly, but get but but again, worth it for us to be able to have some peace of mind and less stress. Yeah. Like again, it comes back to that thing. It's like, it's like thinking I'll I'll redo the bathroom myself, mm. and then you end up finding that it leaks in the corner of the shower, and then the builder or the plumber's got to come in and take all the tiles out, reseal it all, read, and it's cost you more than what it would have done, mm. and it never looks as good as what it would have done if the professional had done it in the first place. And that's what she's saying: is I'd rather pay for a professional this time mm. than go through that stress, get it wrong, and stuff my visa up. Mm. Yeah. And lastly, Catherine from South Africa. Catherine is a vet. Hello, Catherine. She's moved to Auckland with her family, her daughter, and yet she's loving her life. And her words were, we used an agent. I don't, I, I'm not sure if she used NZ Shores. I'm not sure. She doesn't say. Um, we used an agent, and although it is costly, they make sure that all your paperwork is in order before applying so you don't waste time having to reapply. And this is a really good point, she said. She said, also... Not being married, my partner and I had a long list of requirements to prove we are a bona fide couple. Is that how you say it? Bona fide? Bona, bona fide. Bona fide couple. And because we didn't have a joint bank account or own a property jointly, it was a bit more tricky. And our agent made sure that our application had as much chance as possible of being accepted. Yeah. So it keeps coming back to that same thing, doesn't it, It just by? all comes around. And, yeah. And, and, and there's, there's nothing worse than if you've got a job offer. And you stuff your visa up or you put a delay on it, it gets rejected and then you've got to send it all in again. Mm. By the time you've got it back to send it in again, you might need, um, you know, new police checks or yeah. you might need new medicals because they only last for so so many months, don't they, these yeah. things? Yeah. And so, you know, get it right and that's get it. Do it once, do it properly. What's that saying that you always use? Do it once, do it right. Yeah. That's is that, it. Is that the same? Do it properly. Yeah. Oh, do it once, yeah. do it properly. Yeah. Mm. yeah, something like that. Talking about South Africa, Catherine is from South Africa and talking about South Africa, NZ Shores, New Zealand Shores are having this massive in-depth seminar over in South Africa in June 2022. So next yeah, month. I think they've got four four places to go. So I think we're going to do a podcast with NZ Shores, aren't yeah. we? Yeah, and we're going to talk all about that. They're actually going to Santon, Durban, Cape Town and Port Elizabeth and they're going to be talking about jobs in New Zealand, visas and everything immigration. Basically, it's just going to be a massive fest yeah. <laughs> of information yeah. for and you I, I, from I think, South Africa. Yeah, and I think that's including if you want to move to Australia. Oh, yeah, sorry, well. yeah. But yeah. I wasn't going to mention that, Brian. No, we won't. Because we want them here. Yeah, but we do. <laughs> but, you know, if you're supposed to be going to Australia, then please head on over to Australia. Because we just <laughs> sure. like the good people. We just like the good people here in New Zealand. <laughs> <laughs> Right. So now I want to give you the free eligibility assessment, the link to that free eligibility assessment. It is www.nzshores.com slash Liz. L-I-Z. Liz, Liz with the you. masses of paperwork. Why wasn't it Brian? No, because I'm the special one. Oh. Um, you can also get there by just typing in nzshores.com slash Liz. Yeah, um, and <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> And you just <laughs> you click that link, you'll go over, and like I say, you just put in a few details, and you get a free test. You've got nothing to lose. No, it's just like do it and see yeah. if you're eligible. Mm -hmm. um, but so yeah, you know, it's yeah, yeah, and that's. The, but don't waste their time by doing that. You know, you've got to be oh no, you've serious, got to be serious about going over, haven't you? Like you know, and it's just like you know, if if you're if you haven't got a skill that needs to come over to New Zealand, then you know, yeah, it's like I think. Um, You'd, you'd be wasting your own time and stuff like that. So, you, you know, you do have to have a skill. Yeah. That's that's there. So, 
yeah, have a look at it and see what, what's what. But yeah. And like Brian said, next week we're going to be hopefully doing a Zoom call with either Charlotte or Fabian from NZ Shores. Yep. Because there's been some massive announcements in the last week or so about immigration news. And I want to talk to them about it because. Yep. They Again, know far yeah. more than you, Brian. Um, yeah, <laughs> on that subject, obviously. Yeah, and that's the idea. Is like we can't give you that advice, but they can tell you all about it. Yeah, you know. So again, if you want to go over and get that free eligibility test, it's nzshores.com/liz. Go over and take that. And on their front page, actually, you'll see when you go over there. They've got all the stuff about the South Africa seminar that they're doing. Yeah. So, so if you if you listen to this in South Africa, that's yeah. might just be worth popping down to uh, and meeting up with NZ Shores yeah. in South Africa. Yeah. What a great opportunity. I know. Yeah. Sure you go, Brian. Yeah. Well, we're in France at the moment. So. I know. We haven't been to South Africa no. before. I'd love to go to South Africa. Yeah. How weird is it that we're here in France? I know. We can't do the Zoom call because we're in a 16th century house. Yeah. And the internet is diabolical. It is. <laughs> it really is. We're hoping that this this one's going to come out all right yeah. and see it. So, Jono, did that answer your question, my friend? I certainly mm-hmm. hope it did. Um, like I say, thank you to each and every one of our members who contribute daily in that group, helping each other, just giving all their um, yeah. feedback. It's such a lovely group. Yeah, it, it's, it I'm is. I'm so proud of been part of this group and, and and we started it I know, and it just feels weird because you feel like they're all friends and you can just say what you don't have to talk about immigration and moving to New Zealand you can just talk about general stuff because yeah. we've got life while you wait and all those sort of things mm-hmm. people send pictures of where they're living right now and it's just really exciting and when, especially when someone comes over because Ari, Ariana has just come over hasn't she yeah and she's moved down to Dunedin, Dunedin. and they send a picture of having a coffee together with Katie Miley and uh, Ariana. Ariana. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. How yeah. brilliant is that? Yeah. It's just, it makes you feel so warm inside that you brought these people together. It, it does. It really, yeah. really does. So, you know, if you want to be part of that, take the five day video guide yeah. and join us in the Slack group. And remember that link again is um, www.nzahead.com slash free. And that's yeah. the free five day video guide. Okay, so with that all being said, we hope that has helped you in your decision. And it, to, should, it should do. Yeah, whether or not yep. to use an immigration advisor. Yep. And we'll see you next time when we're going to be talking to someone from NZ Shores and we'll be going over the details of their South African seminars and also the big changes that have happened in the last couple of days. Yep. So thanks for listening. Kia kaha. Stay strong. Kia u. Stay true. And I'll see you soon. See you now. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for joining us on the podcast this week. We have loved having you here with us. If you love this week's show, please share this with your friends. Send it to anybody you know that wants to think about moving to New Zealand and get on over here yourself. Tell them how brilliant it is as well. And also, if you haven't signed up for our free five-day video guide showing you what life is like, really like, in New Zealand, then go over to the website and sign up. You are missing out. This is brilliant. Go over to www.nzahead slash free and we will send you five days worth of videos about what life is like in New Zealand. You are going to love it. So one more time, that website that you need to sign up for the free five-day guide is www.nzahead slash free. So we're going to see you next week. Until then, have a great week and we'll speak to you soon. Bye. Bye. (laughs) Say bye again. Bye. Bye. (laughs) Ha, 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 ha.